Wolf Woman, Fade In, Exterior, Mohegan Indian Reservation Day, Fidelia Smith, 12, the dauntless Native American Mohegan with long braids, calico dress, homespun red cape, and quahog wampum necklace, walks to a school with Emma Fielding, 11, Mohegan, bookish with English curls, and William Fielding, 17, Mohegan, a Gilbert Blythe sincere farmhand. Superimpose, Mohegan Indian Reservation, Connecticut, 1839. Road signs point to City of Norwich and Port of New London. William and Emma carry tin lunch pails. Fidelia swings a woven sweetgrass lunch basket and sings in Mohegan. Emma shushes her, scanning fearfully as they climb a hill. The sky is so clear today. I can see all the way up to the river to New London and the wide expanse of the blue sea. Look, there's the big island. That one always reminds me of Wolf Woman. William turns to Emma. Befuddled. Who's Wolf Woman? Emma smacks her forehead. Now you've done it, William. Fidelia rubs her hands together, excited. Let me tell you her story. Animation. Riverside Wigwam Village Day. Wolf Woman. A Native American woman with braids and buckskin. 20s, 30s. Walks around along the river, gathering cohawk shells. Shanamede. A big native male con artist. 20s to 40s living on a nearby island in the river, waves to her. She waves back, and he beckons. She agrees to visit him and places her wooden mortar, stone pestle, and duck eggs inside her dugout canoe, and then paddles to his island. Chanamede introduces himself and offers her blueberries and dried corn. She grinds the corn. He builds a fire. She makes batter and cooks corn blueberry cakes, which they eat on bark plates. The sun begins to set. Wolf Woman gathers her things to leave. Chanamy becomes enraged at her departure, threatening her with a wooden club. She runs to her canoe with her things and paddles home. Chanamy follows in his canoe, paddling madly to catch up. She dumps her mortar, pestle, and eggs into the river. Rivers, riverside Makiawisiuk, tiny mystical woodland little people in shadow, point at Wolf Woman. Her belongings magically multiply, slowing him down. Trekking through that mess worsens his rage. He catches up again, threatening her life. Makiawasug squeals with worry. Wolf Woman grabs one of her braids, unbraids it, and yanks out a single hair. She pulls it out straight until it becomes stiff like a spear. Wolf Woman aims it at Chanmead and throws it at his forehead. It hits him. He falls dead from his canoe and sinks beneath the waves. Wolf Woman holds her braids, trembling. Animation Narration Long ago, Wolf Woman was collecting cohawk shells to make wampum jewelry. A man waved to her from a nearby island and she waved back. He asked her to visit him and she agreed. Placing her mortar, pestle, and eggs inside her canoe, she paddled to the island. When she arrived, he told her his name was Chanamede and gifted her blueberries and dried corn. Wolf Woman thanked him and prepared them a meal of blueberry johnny cakes. As the sun began to set, Wolf Woman gathered her things to leave. Chanamede grew angry and insisted that she stay. She grabbed her belongings and ran back to her canoe. He chased her, waving his war club. She paddled away quickly but he hopped in his own canoe and caught up to her. Wolf Woman dumped her mortar, pestle, and eggs into the river. But the Makiawasug little people on the riverbank pointed their fingers at her belongings, and they turned into dozens of mortars, pestles, and eggs, blocking his way. Pushing through that sticky mess drove Chanamede into a murderous rage. At last, he caught up to Wolf Woman, ready to kill her. Wolf Woman knew she had to find a way to survive. She pulled a long black hair from her head and drew it through her fingers until it became stiff like a spear. She raised that spear into the air, aimed and threw it at Chanamede. Her hair spear struck him in the forehead and he fell dead into the water. That was the end of Chanamede. End animation. Return to scene. Stunned silence. <clears throat> That's a terrible story, Fidelia. 
Everyone knows we used to send criminals to, the, uh, to that island. Wolf Woman stupidly went there and became a murderer herself. No, Wolf Woman was brave and clever. She used the power in her braids to survive. Do yourself a favor, Fidelia. Don't share that Wolf Woman story on your first day of school. Father says I should write down all the old stories in our Mohegan language and English so we don't lose them. Maybe not all of them. Exterior, Fort Hill Farm and Schoolhouse, day, continuous. Fidelia, Emma, and William arrive at a sign that says Fort Hill Farm. Nearby stands a Puritan Plain one-room schoolhouse. William picks up a thresher that is leaning against a tree. I'm going to work. Study hard, Emma. He pats Fidelia's shoulder with, and his words catch in his throat. Try to stay out of trouble, Wolf Woman. Fidelia hesitates before entering the school. Emma drags her inside. Interior schoolhouse day continuous. A Puritan plain classroom with a handful of poor, chatty native and white students led by Miss Elizabeth Raymond, 20-30s, a white woman, pulling her sleeve to cover bruises on her wrist. On the wall is a paddle with a snake design. Fidelia bursts in, humming a native tune. Kids stop talking. Miss Raymond shushes Fidelia. Fidelia stops and hangs her red cape on a peg. Mason Mather, 12, a chippy white boy, eyes Fidelia's sweetgrass basket and sniffs with disgust. I smell sweetgrass. Fidelia notices the horse manure on his boots, holds her nose, points, and grimaces. I smell Majigan. Emma's eyes widen. He overhears and swaggers her way, angrily. What'd you say, Injun witch? Fidelia ignores him. The word witch triggers fear and disassociation in this ring. The cry of a whippoorwill sends Fidelia running to the window. Fidelia sharply matches the bird's whistle, which returns Miss Raymond to reality. I'm betting your bird friend works for the devil. Fidelia grabs his shirt collar. Birds aren't evil, and I'm no witch. Miss Raymond hears the word witch again, and appears unsteady. Her fearful eyes are drawn to the snake paddle, hanging on the wall, until a little girl tugs on her skirt. Where do I sit? Miss Raymond shows the little girl the desk with her name on it. Fidelia gets an idea and turns back to Mason. I am a friend of the Makiawasug, you know. Maki what? I don't speak Injun. Fidelia gets cocky. Of course not. It's hard to learn. But if you could speak Mohegan, you'd know the Makiawasug are powerful woodland little people who can turn into birds and snatch human boys just for fun. If I give the word to that whippoorwill, he'll come and get you. Mason looks to his friends and rolls his fingers at his head to show Fidelia is crazy. Just proves you're a witch. Witches think they can do anything. I can do anything, just like Wolf Woman. Wolf Woman? Ha! <laughs> Sounds like another engine witch. Miss Raymond overhears, rubs her bruised, abused arms. Emma fidgets in her seat. Kids get rowdy. Miss Raymond grows harsh. Settle down, children. Mason shakes his head at Fidelia. Crazy engine. Fidelia reaches to grab him. Emma leaves her seat and steps in front of her. Fidelia can't dodge Emma to get at Mason. Fidelia, you don't really believe in the little people. Fidelia continues to unsuccessfully dodge around her friend. I give them the benefit of the doubt. Miss Raymond pulls it together and claps to get the student's attention. Class, as most of you already know, I am Miss Raymond. I've placed your name cards at your seats. Mason can't read his name card and turns to Boy One, who is scanning the name cards. Hey, uh, you see my seat? Boy One nods and points to Mason's seat. Fidelia reads her name card and realizes, with disgust, that she's beside Mason. Emma sits on Fidelia's other side. Miss Raymond approaches Fidelia. Did Emma help you find your seat? Fidelia holds up her name card and reads each word succinctly. Fidelia Smith. I found it myself. You know how to read? I can read and write in English and Mohegan. Let's see. Miss Raymond returns to the front of the class and speaks with a hint of condescension. We have a new student joining us from the reservation. Let's wish Miss Fidelia Smith a good morning. The teacher waves Fidelia to the front of the class. Fidelia steps forward grudgingly. Miss Raymond prompts the class. Good morning, Fidelia. Fidelia glares at Mason. 
who leans into her seat to sniff her sweet grass lunch basket and hold his nose. Miss Raymond cocks her head at Fidelia to prompt her to wish the class good morning. Fidelia, feisty, starts to say the words in Mohegan. We was. Emma cuts Fidelia off, mouthing. English. Fidelia reluctantly gives in. Good morning, class. Emma is relieved. Miss Raymond eyes Fidelia suspiciously. You may be seated, Fidelia. Today we will begin with a history lesson. Fidelia takes her seat. Miss Raymond writes the word civilized on the chalkboard. When the English arrived in Connecticut, the Mohegan Indian chief Uncas made friends with them so his people could become civilized. Fidelia rolls her eyes. Miss Raymond writes Chief Uncas and says it slowly, aloud. Chief Uncas. Fidelia stands with a determined stomp. Could you always wonk sis? Miss Raymond turns smug and scoffs. Fidelia, no one knows what you're saying. Here we read and write in English. Fidelia fiercely looks to Emma. Emma mouths empathetically. English. Okay. Fidelia addresses Miss Raymond. What I said was that Anka's name is correctly pronounced Wonksis, which means fox in English. I thought everyone should know that. Fidelia plunks back into her seat. Emma holds her breath. Students giggle over Fidelia's defiance. Miss Raymond takes the snake carved paddle and slaps it in her hand. Only uncivilized cultures name people after animals. Fidelia stiffens, more defiant. Emma gasps. Fidelia stands with a correcting finger raised. My father said the English had a king named Richard the Lionheart because they know that animals are more important than people. More students giggle, infuriating Miss Raymond. Having a lion heart is not the same as being a lion. In either case, I'm sure your father also taught you to obey him. Miss Raymond tugs a sleeve. Fidelia scratches her head, confused before speaking. No. Miss Raymond puzzles. But he did teach me that Wongsis, uh, Uncas, respected the English, so I should learn English. Miss Raymond sighs with a relief. Precisely. Fidelia, still thinking, taps her cheek. Her eyes light up in revelation. And you should learn Mohegan to show respect for Chief Uncas. Students react with oohs and whispers. Miss Raymond reddens and, su and suffers some sort of PTSD while speaking. Children do not make demands of their fathers. Miss Raymond tugs the sleeve, covering her bruises, and corrects herself. Uh, I mean, teachers, nor should they question them. Fidelia appears bewildered. Then how do teachers learn anything? The class bursts out laughing. Dumb witch. Miss Raymond hears the word witch and shudders. It is not a teacher's job to learn. That is your job as a student. You will obey me and speak only English in this classroom. Miss Raymond points her snake-carved paddle at Fidelia. Fidelia sees the snake move. Is that understood, young lady? Fidelia is clueless about what her teacher means and freaked by the moving snake. No. Miss Raymond grabs Fidelia and raises the snake-carved paddle, arms shaking. Last chance, English only. Agreed? No. Children squeal in fright. Emma half stands, wanting to rush to <clears throat> Fidelia's aid but holds back. Bye-bye, injured witch. Miss Raymond's paddle lands hard on Fidelia's backside. Miss Raymond lowers her voice like a man. You will obey me. She continues to brutally beat Fidelia, having some sort of serious dissociative episode. Emma is horrified. Exterior, Fort Hill, moments later. Fidelia staggers outside the school wearing her red cape again. She is dazed, holding her lower back. William is oblivious, threshing wheat, or shooing crows that are eating hayseeds and chaff. He finally spots Fidelia, who looks lost. Don't bother looking for an outhouse. There isn't one. Fidelia limps closer to him. William stops working. Why are you walking so funny? Fidelia's POV, her braid. She unties one braid, pulls out a hair, draws it through her fingers, and it becomes a spear. She aims it at the school. Back to scene. Oh, no. Did Miss Raymond give you a whooping? Emma rushes out of the school and stuffs Fidelia's sweetgrass lunch basket into her hand. 
here, Fidelia. Your nonamorpha says sweetgrass protects you from bad spirits, like that awful Miss Raymond. Fidelia examines her basket with disgust. I guess it let you down. How bad does it hurt? William pains at Fidelia's pained reaction. Emma reties her friend's braid. William takes both girls' hands, make a, makes a circle, and prays. Mundu, great spirit, please help Fidelia. Mundu will go. The great spirit is good. Fidelia swoons in pain and chants. Mundu we go, Mundu we go, Mundu we go. Fidelia's POV, a battle for survival, surrounds her. Crows fight for wheat. Rabbits desperately nibble fading fall grass. Dying maple leaves sigh. Wide-eyed squirrels scurry for nuts. A praying mantis ruthlessly nabs its prey. Back to scene. A dying bee lands on Fidelia. She removes it carefully and sets it down gently. Her own load lightens. What did you do to get yourself in such a state on your first day of class? Set the school on fire? Fidelia remains stunned silent. I'll say she set the school on fire. As soon as we arrived, she gave it to that scuffy mason boy. Why? He called her a witch. Is that all? No, she also told Miss Raymond that the animals are as important as people. Yikes. Good thing Fidelia didn't mention that more vegan means wolf people. It got worse. Anyway. Uh, Fidelia said Miss Raymond should speak Mohegan to thank Chief Uncas for helping the English colonists. William looks Fidelia in the eye. Girl, you were piling on the agony. Then she gave Fidelia one last look, one last chance to obey her and speak only English in class, but little Miss Mohegan refused. William throws up his arms in frustration. So Miss Raymond beat the dickens out of her. William eyes the schoolhouse door nodding Emma in that direction. I'm going. Take care of yourself, Fidelia. William bends to examine Fidelia's glazed eyes. Come on, I'll walk you home. The wheat can wait. Exterior, Fort Hill, continuous. Fidelia follows William down Fort Hill, staying close to the stone wall. The ancestral spirit of the late, great Lucy, 80, appears to Fidelia. We walk us up. Great Lucy follows Fidelia and William. We go outside. William turns and sees nothing. Who are you wishing good morning? Great Lucy. Great Lucy's been dead for nine years. You need to rest. He's right on both counts. Put some white oak bark liniment on your back. Get some rest. And you'll be back to school in no time. Fidelia gives her a confused look. If you don't return, you'll be sewing white folks' clothes or scrubbing their floors for the rest of your life. Great Lucy begins to fade and calls out as she disappears. Be more like Emma. Be more like Emma. William and Fidelia pass blueberry bushes. William offers blueberries to Fidelia. She refuses, wincing. They cross the road and head home. Exterior, Mohegan Hill, continuing. Fidelia freezes at the base of the hill, shuddering at the sound of an axe. Up the hill, she spies Henry Matthews, 22, an old-time homespun Mohegan splitting logs. William raises a finger to his lips, suggesting they sneak past Henry. But Henry stomps into their path, shaking his axe. Well, well, well. It ain't field hand fielding. I see you've traded in white man's grunt work for some for babysitting. There's no crime in an honest day's labor as a farmhand, Henry. Thomas? I'll tell you what's honest. When's the last time you shot a deer with a homemade bow and made the arrows to go with it? Fidelia bends and groans. My mistake, William. I didn't realize our young friend was injured. Henry bends down beside her and rests his axe on his knee. By the looks of your bent back and strained face, Fidelia Smith, I'm guessing you took the snake atop Fort Hill. Fidelia tries to be brave. Darn straight, Henry. Henry caresses his axe. Next time you plan on poking a snake, let me know. I'll sharpen my axe for you. Fidelia's expression lightens. May I ask why you were fighting the snake? Miss Raymond said... Who? I mean, the snake said people are superior to animals. 
Leave it to a state to disrespect her own kind. She also said Chief Wonksis wanted us civilized. Henry rocks back and laughs. <laughs> Civilize? Animals are more civilized than people any day. Even a snake should know that. She also said that I was not allowed to speak our language in class. Of course you did not agree to that. Fidelia stands taller from Henry's support. I did not. We go on. William makes a curious expression, not knowing what the word means. Fidelia whispers to him. We gun means good. Henry smirks and dips his finger into a paint pot and puts two small stripes of red paint onto each of Fidelia's cheeks. You are a true warrior, Fidelia. Henry picks up a tiny Makiawa sub offering basket. This is my gift to honor your bravery. A Makiawa sub? A little people offering basket. She examines the basket like it's more priceless than gold. Tabutni, Henry. William is disgusted. Henry points to the woods, where Fidelia catches a glimpse of a tiny Makiawa sug running behind a tree. She rubs her eyes. Henry winks at her. If you look out for them, they'll always look out for you. William drops his head, groaning, disgusted at this nonsense. Goodbye, Henry. Stop thinking like a city boy, William. And you'll catch up to this little girl. I believe in balancing the old with the new. Wasn't that what Fidelia was trying to do by reading and writing in English in Mohegan? How'd that work out for her? Come on, Fidelia. Let's get you home. Take good care of our wounded warrior. As William and Fidelia leave, Henry points to his eye and then to William as if to say, I'm watching you. Shadows of Makiawasug little people scurry through the woods. Exterior, Mohegan Hill continuing. Fidelia struggles uphill past William's rough home. Nonner Cynthia, 56, William's busybody grandmother, steps outside their house in secondhand city clothes. Fidelia Ann, Mohegan women don't wear worn paint. Cynthia offers Fidelia a hanky to wipe off her face paint. But Fidelia waves off the hanky. No, thank you, Nanu Cindy. Henry Matthews says I'm a warrior. I will keep it on. Naughty warrior who's just been paddled by her teacher by the look of it. Please let her be, Nanu Cindy. She's hurt and bad. I'm taking her home. Fidelia grimaces in pain. Nanu Cindy winces, showing a hint of humanity. We'll stop for another break when we reach the church, Fidelia. Fidelia follows William uphill. Nanu Cindy calls out. You'd do well to step inside that church and pray for our dear Lord to make you better behaved, girl. Once at the church, William pats its 1831 granite cornerstone and offers Fidelia a nearby rock seat. She takes it. Did you know this church saved our lives? Now you sound like not a Cynthia. It's true. If we didn't build it, President Andrew Jackson would have sent us marching across the Mississippi, like the Chickasaw, Seminole, Creek, Cherokee, and Choctaw children. Indians pray just as well outdoors. But white folks prefer churches. We built this one as a compromise. Fidelia's eyes cloud over. Do you know what a compromise is? Fidelia puts her hands on her hips, obstinately. Right. You're only 12. A compromise is making a choice that is not the best choice or the worst choice, but something in between. Fidelia pokes in William's direction with her finger. You're trying to teach me a lesson. You think I should have kept quiet and not spoken Mohegan in class, so the president won't get mad and send us out west. William gently touches her war paint. You're too clever to keep quiet. You fight for what you believe in, even if you have to get a woman for it. That's because compromises don't work, William. We learned their English language. Now they won't let us speak ours. How can we save our language? It's, it's impossible. Fidelia grabs her braids and stands, trembling. I am Wolf Woman. Nothing is impossible. I will find a way. The wind blows her long braids and red cape behind her like a superhero. Her wampum necklace gleams. Shadows of Makiawasag nod and twitter happily in the nearby woods. Fade out.